Welcome back to Kona. It's time to explore Bedard's house, which I thought I already had explored, but when I was doing the treasure hunt, I realized I haven't at all. So, let's check it out. There's bulbs. Where's the light switch? Ah! Much better. I just realized there's something beautifully poetic about this. That TV static is sometimes known as, like, snow. And look outside. We're in a blizzard. A loose change in the cracks. Enough food for rough times. Enough orange juice for the apocalypse. Random thought, if Carl had a kid, could we call them Carl's Jr.? Religion was very influential throughout Quebec many years ago. Indeed, it was surprising that Carl did not come across a single chapel since arriving here. How did they draw the sun? Hmm. TV's on the other side. <laughs> this chair is wrong. Good Paul Six appearing papal. His crooked fingers gave the impression he was about to bestow a miracle. Yeah. Two stakes. Alright, I gotta dump something though. Okay, just dump some stuff in the truck. Looks like there's a note on the fridge too, but it won't let me actually examine it. And it's in French, I think. No sound on the line. The perfect cookie-cutter Catholic family, most likely attending church every Sunday. Oh, it's the same toy figure that we saw in all those treasure hunt chests. Who knew that giraffes thrived in the North Pole? The craze for toys was stupefying. love of religion and ancestors was rooted deep inside the hearts of Canadians of old, to which the Bedards appeared to be closely related. This room doesn't have a light. The empty cradle sent an eerie feeling down Carl's spine, as if minutes ago someone just grabbed the baby and made a run for it. This room doesn't have a light either. God, their their bedrooms are lightless. It's weird. Carl wasn't desperate enough to invade a village woman's privacy. What have you been doing for the rest of the game, Carl? Oh. One light. All right. That's something. Dreamcatchers originated from First Nations legends. They were used to trap nightmares. Works of art from a future artist. <laughs> woof. W-O-U-F. Woof, woof. 
That's cute. Oh, but this diary you don't mind reading, Carl. Marie's Diary, page 1, August 16th. I have a diary, just like Mom. Unlike her, though, I don't wear a long face when writing. But I do love to write my thoughts. And about Martin, most of all. I love talking about him. I think he loves me, too. Just like in Romeo and Juliet. People don't like it when I see him, only because he's ablaze. But just like in the story, nothing can stand in the way of true love. August 18th, that's just two days after. I lost appetite. I can't sleep anymore. Every waking hour, intense shivers run through my body. Dad's making me see Dr. Uh, Pupre, Pupre, I don't know, <laughs> the doctor, with his big hands touching me everywhere, his foul breath exhaling all over my face. Ugh, yuck. I'm not sick, I'm in love. I love Martin so much. There's nothing I like better than thinking about us playing together like we always do. I wonder if he found the key I lost the other day. He was pretty sad when I did because it's for his dad's garden shed. And Martin has always been afraid of him. I think Martin's dad is a bit like dad's god. The key fell in a burrow next to the shed. Poor Martin. He cried like a baby. But I still love him. Okay, so probably something I can fish out with the magnet. August 24th. Mom often cries when she feels lonely. I think there's no reason for her to cry. Mom can be stupid sometimes. <laughs> Jeez, Marie. Dad works a lot because of that wealthy English man buying everything. That's what notaries do. To make sure that people get what they're paying for, basically. It's complicated, but that's how Dad explained it to me. The rich guy doesn't look half as bad as Martin told me he was. When I saw him this morning at Dad's office, he told me, Call me Uncle Willie. I found that pretty funny. Plus he gave me candy. Okay, it was kind of old and dry, but still candy. I think Dad gets along well with Uncle Willie because when he's with him, he laughs the same way he does with Father Label. Or probably not Label, probably like LaBelle, Father LaBelle. September 22nd. I had to gobble up the doctor's horrible medicine because if I hadn't, I wouldn't have made it to Christmas, or so he said. I haven't seen Martin in weeks, nor did I go to school for that matter. Dad has been praying beside my bed every morning for a while now, and at bedtime too. Today he went hunting with Uncle Willie, and he told me to ask God to bless him in my prayers. This... Uh, this sounds like much more than just love sickness. I mean, Dad praying beside... Marie's bed? And what do they say? Lost appetite, can't sleep, intense shivers. That's not love, that's something else. Something's wrong. I think this has to do with the medicine that only the richest of rich can afford. Dad told me he'll be praying for Uncle Willie until the day he dies and that I should do the same. God, Father LaBelle, and now Uncle Willie. I wonder when Dad finds the time to pray for Santa Claus. September 28th. How can Mom be so stupid? And she's getting fat, too? Marie, what is wrong with you? She cries like a newborn puppy all the time. It's so annoying. I came across Martin today. He seemed pretty thin and maybe kind of dirty. He doesn't look as neat and presentable as Uncle Willie, that's for sure. Jesus, Marie. Just within three pages of their diary, they called their mom fat and stupid. Stupid twice. Rude. Oh, right, just another door to the outside. It's weird to me. Quite a few of these homes have had multiple doors to the outside, even though they're really small. Like, I get having, like, a back and a front door in a larger house, but, like, when your back and front door is right there, and then the other one's just across the room, what's the point? It's just kind of weird. Alright, let's look for that key.
Yeah, those aren't gonna grow for a while. Wonder what they were. Oh. Oh, this isn't the garden shed. This isn't what's locked. I guess maybe that's high in the house? This is just the garage. Second one, can load it up into the truck. Oh. I think that's gas. An aging car was parked here. Carl could picture the notary's heavy sedan with a huge back seat large enough to fit the whole family. Uh, might be oil, I guess, then. Peculiar key indeed. Too small to fit in a door lock. What sort of miniature object was it meant for? That's weird. I didn't see anything in the house that needed a key. Looks like someone had to hide their habits. Yeah, that's quite a collection of beer bottles. Can you imagine somebody clogging up the toilet and having to run out, maybe throw a blizzard into the garage to get to the plunger? I'm not seeing a garden shed. Oh, wait. The garden shed wasn't here, was it? It was probably at... Uh, I forgot which place it was exactly. I guess the Blaze's place? Where I, uh, I already fished that key out of the hole next to the garden shed? That must have been it. That makes sense. So, if the key's not for something that's here, where would it be for? Well, they were close friends with William Hamilton. Maybe it's like a little lockbox or something in William's place up north? Alright, I think it's time to head up further north. So, looks like... Oh, I can't zoom in anymore when I'm looking at the map in the car. Um, but it looks like there's kind of just a long, fairly empty road here and then probably a bunch of houses around that area up there and then of course that's William's house at the very top right um, there is a very very large hiking trail though off in this direction and just right there just a little bit to the right of that first like little walking symbol looks like there's a, a tower of some sort there so I might want to go check that out I wonder if the walking trail would be big enough for the car to go on probably not but yeah, let's, let's just keep going and see what we find. Love how atmospheric it is just to drive in the blizzard. Ooh. Could be some supplies in that little trailer thing. Another one of those giraffes. Oh, what? I can't take the last one? That's just cruel. That pathway to the right leads to Captain A and B, by the way, in case you're wondering. 
I don't think I ever drove through there. Drove through there on camera. Oh, and I gotta make sure I stop for people's mailboxes now. So like, this is the mailbox for who? The Blazes. Oh. Well, that was exciting. Slide. I. Oh, we can't drive there then. We gotta take the hiking trail. Whose car is that? They were caught in the landslide, or did they just like. Oh, yeah, they were caught in it. I'm guessing all power's cut off at this point. Given that that's sparking, probably isn't transmitting much. The track was fresh. That meant the car sunk down just a little while ago. Now where the hell could the passengers possibly have gone? Yeah, it looks like they were being pursued at the time. Another one of these. Firebolts. I guess they just got out and probably just sprinted probably off that way. Yeah, I see like a suitcase that's opened up. A dress. Blowing in the wind. Right until that point. Carl had believed that the object of his crossbow hunting had been a ravenous wolf who was terrorizing the village. But as he noticed the height at which the bolts had been fired, he concluded that the beast had to have been as tall as a man on his feet, not unlike a gorilla. The thought was chilly. It's odd that it's in the car, though. Like, did they shoot the car because the beast was somehow, like, in or around the car. A lone boot. Didn't we see a single boot on the doorstep of someone else's home? I wonder if this is the other boot. blood or anything inside. Don't think anybody was... Well, nobody bled. Can't say they weren't hurt in the crash or anything, but they didn't bleed inside, at least. Ranger manual. The manual owner seems to be Wilfred Roy. Someone must have dropped this in a hurry. But whoever did was heading into the woods. Carl's tracking instincts were quickly kicking in. Man, there's paw prints. How we doing on heat? Eh, like 60%. Not too bad. Alright, let's go. There's really no point in taking pictures of every one of those, right? I mean, there's going to be weird ghostly tracks next to every single one of them. Ice wall? What the hell? Oh. Carl knew why he was suddenly shivering. He was going back to the realm of visions. Carl had no issue recognizing the spirit-like figures, but he couldn't figure out what they wanted from him. The Phantom. Freed of reality's shackles, vanished in the forest. Earlier, Carl had witnessed a tragedy that befell it. Another phantom disappeared in the wilderness. Carl had seen what happened to it, too. A third phantom gently faded away. Carl noticed that as the cursed villagers finally left reality, he could feel a sense of unburdening exuding from them in an almost intimate way. Okay, so I guess every frozen body that I've found is contributing to unburdening this, which is probably gonna... <laughs> what, melt the ice wall somehow? But apparently I missed one. Hmm.
Carl sensed that the cold was beating a retreat, as if he was moving away from some kind of center of gravity. So I missed somebody then. There's a fourth body somewhere out there. Fourth frozen person, but where? Oh, I found the last ski track. I've just been going around looking for where to continue next. Trying to see if I missed anything. And yeah, in the trunk of this car at Lamothay's garage. Is the final one. Now that doesn't mean I can get it up and going just yet. I still need the handlebars and also maybe a key? Okay, so I can actually produce the caribou. See, I actually ended up googling it because I wasn't sure where to go, but I do have a hunch that most likely where I need to find the final person who's frozen, I suspect, is inside of the ice cave. Because, you know, it's super, super cold there and I can't go there without getting the jacket from Rosaire. And of course, to go into the ice cave and get the jacket from Rosaire, I need to make the caribou, and I was missing an item for that. So I googled that, and it turns out I actually already had everything I needed to make it. The item I was missing was the, the thing on the right there, which I thought was like, I don't know, white whiskey or something? I guess white whiskey is caribou, I think. But that's actually just an empty bottle. You just need an empty bottle to put it in. Which makes sense, it's just, I wish I gave you better feedback that that's what I was missing, because, I mean, those icons between the wine and the empty bottle look almost exactly the same, and it's just, there's like real, really no way to know that that's an empty bottle. Alright, Rosera, don't shoot my head off, please. Now I got gloves, finally. <laughs> Can't believe all that time I was running through a blizzard without even having gloves. Alright, it's ice cave time. Got my gun out, got my clothes, I also gotta remember I have the flare gun. Um, just in case there's somewhere to start a fire in there, let's... Not deposit. Withdraw. Let's withdraw a piece of wood. Oh, actually I already had one on me. Luckily, he had the coat to protect him from the biting cold. Oh god. This cave's creepy. Uh, let's go forwards first. Remember, this is the cave we saw the wolves running out from? Like they were running away from something? Oh, I think that cavern just links back up with this one. Why does, why does the camera change when I get down into the water? Bloop. That's odd. God, this cavern's gorgeous. I mean, just... Look at that. That's so freaking pretty. Fireplace. Oh. There's more wolves down here.
Did it just melt into the ground? What the hell? That's another frozen body. Yep, the final one. They got frozen while they were falling down, it looks like. Almost instant. Another instance of this magic ice. What was this one doing? Lying on the ground, so afraid. The plot thickened like water into ice. He had been running in fear from something creeping towards him, against which he couldn't do anything. Only to end up like this, petrified and cold. Exactly what to use that for. Oh. I need to look at this? Strange. It seemed as though Regin had been ready to take up arms and slay people like Hamilton. Could he have committed murder for his cause? Who could have gotten killed in front of his very eyes? August 8th, 1970, old Rosier had told me the mine administrators were having us on, and that the mines from before the war were neither collapsed nor inaccessible. Well, as usual, the old man was right. Those damn English people keep lying to us every damn day. Because we're just slaves to them, water boys, white negroes, like Valliers said. We'll see who the slaves are by the end of the year. I'll set up the heart of my government in those mines, the resistance. Watch out, fat cats. I'm putting bayonets on our cannons. August 14th. The English tell us the region is full of resources. The resources they're forgetting about is our seniors. It's full of old people around here, and they've got plenty of resources. Old man Rosaire, in exchange for a full load of bottles of caribou a day, put us in contact with the best our country has to offer. The veterans, hunters, the salt of the earth, I'm telling you. These people have shotguns upon shotguns, in blinds all over the territory. They agreed to lend me some, pretty much no questions asked. I still told them a big fat cat hunt was in the works. I also told them our aim was to make sure there was not a damn one of them left from here to the... something river. September 1st is even better than I had thought. The guns aren't old-timey relics from the Great War, they're modern semi-automatic weapons in there too, and dynamite stolen from the mining sites after closing. All I need now is militia to bear these arms and kick the English out of our lands. I'm wondering who the savages will back up. I have faith that they will help us and not them. Taking back their land is a matter of principle for them. The savages? September 4th. God damn it. Gales really has no balls. I was aware of that before bringing him into my project, but it's so insulting to be emasculated like that. He told me in his wimpy voice that he has something to blackmail Big Hamilton with. What's the point of blackmailing him when we could just blow his head off? I would have been better off speaking to his wife, Giselle. Now, she's something, that woman. She could hold her own with a shotgun. Besides, everyone knows she's the one who wears the pants in that couple. Lamethe has given up too, that coward. On the other hand, the Lamethes, they're not serious enough. They have a few screws loose. You can't start a revolution with crazy people. September 24th. Pierre, I know you would have been on my side. 
You would have been a lieutenant in my army. Rest in peace. Eaten by wolves. Not an easy way to kick the bucket. Some people in the village are saying you brought this on yourself by poaching those wolves and that in the end they just brought you to justice in their own way. There will be a monument in your name in my new Quebec. September 28th. I will have to free the Monason region all by myself. Alexandre Blaise didn't appreciate it when I baited him by praising his brother. That guy has changed since Pierre was found. He's been miserable. I tried talking to him about it, but the big oaf only punched the mirror and that made his hand bleed. I'll give freedom to my country without those tender-hearted folks. They'll thank me later. October 2nd. What happened last night was horrible. I'd never seen someone die like that right next to me. I feel sick. So much blood. I'm wondering if revolution really is for me after all. So their motivation for the revolution that they're trying to do comes from the imperialism that took over their land and uh, trying to regain their their sovereignty. Which I can certainly get behind, but their, their planned methods are very extreme. Looks like they were planning on literally just murdering a bunch of people. Um... Also, this person seems to have uh, a bit of a kind of like toxic masculinity thing going on. Gales has no balls, the wife is the one who wears the pants in the couple, and there's something about emasculating me. Yeah, it's so insulting to be emasculated like that. Oh, right, I already used a piece of wood on the other fire. Um, ah. <laughs> How much dynamite am I gonna need? God. Can I just, like... Can I just, like, throw the dynamite? Is this something I can use at will? Nah, it's not. It's in my inventory. Not consumables or equipment. Seems to have made some... He seems to have made some modifications. Why well, sleep at home when you can sleep in a cave? <laughs> yeah, this really wouldn't be a very pleasant place to sleep, huh? Gotta be so windy. field rifle and I've got some ammo for that thankfully I haven't had to fire a shot yet yeah I've got 20 shots of it nice it's funny that I've found more ammo for this rifle than I have for the pistol I've never found any ammo for the pistol whatsoever Alright, looks like that's it for this place. So what is this? Like a shortcut, or...? No? It's weird, I don't know what the significance of... of... this was. What...? Oh. Oh, I see. I mean, I didn't need that though, right? I think it's just a shortcut, because I could just walk back across there. Now that they've armed me up, I'm a little bit worried I'm going to face a lot of wolves or something on the way out. Ice seemed what? to take over this place like mold. That wall wasn't there earlier. How was he going to get out of here? Oh. Dynamite. I guess they're teaching me dynamite. <laughs> By forcing you to use it. That's a lot of ice to just have suddenly appeared in the last, like, five minutes, though. Alright. I have no idea what the timer's set for.
Um. What? The ice, oddly, did not budge despite the powerful fiery blast. Something was definitely rotten in this place. What the hell? Well, what do I do then? That's interesting. This is how it was, I think, before I went into the vision state, and then it opened up in, like, the, the vision that I had. But what's interesting is that even though I'm moving around this world in the vision state, right? Because, like, you move within that state, and then once you come, come to, you're wherever you went in that state, up there. But, I was able to pass through this in the other state. This wasn't here in the other state, and I was able to walk through it. Which raises some strange questions. I guess I'm changing between worlds. Uh, hold on. Let's do... Oh! Let's maybe do meat first? Are these special wolves? They almost look special, like maybe supernatural. Um, not consumable. Is it equipment? Ooh. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they don't go for the meat. Whew. Uh, I need to heal myself. Oh, I could take painkillers. Yeah, let's take the med kit. Oh, my mental state is freaking awful. Let's smoke some cigarettes. I've actually been doing that off camera, by the way. If you're wondering why my health has kind of slowly been going down little amounts, it's from smoking cigarettes. Yeah, can I blow it this way? Yes. You can still see my cigarette on the ground. Is it nighttime now? Oh, Christ. God, it looks so cool with the, the flashlight illuminating the driving lizard driven by the wind. What the hell? Oh, that's from the explosion, I guess. I was like, why, why are there burning boards out there? Where are we exactly? Uh, a little bit south of where we went in. Very close to our car. We'll see more wolves on the way to the car. Feels like the damn world's ending. So, we need to go to the ice wall, ice cave thing. Alright, well, I'm at the Lachance's place, right next to the place where I need to use the dynamite at the ice cave thing. So, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. 
I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm gonna go blow up the entrance to a cave. In a good way. <laughs>